The next best practice is to keep as up-to-date as possible with the contents of the Sun Alert patch cluster in between major maintenance windows. Why should I bother with the Sun Alert patch cluster? I've been told that it's better to just download the individual patches that I need when I need them. You ask a lot of questions, my friend. Having the latest Sun Alert patch cluster installed on your system is important because the patches contained in the cluster are considered to be the most important and highly recommended patches for Solaris 10. They provide the minimum amount of change required to address known security, data corruption, and availability issues. You can find the latest Sun Alert patch clusters on SunSolve in the Patches and Updates section. Go to the Download section of the Patches and Updates page and select Recommended Patch Clusters. You'll find the Sun Alert patch cluster in the list of Solaris patch clusters. Be sure you select and download the Solaris 10 Sun Alert patch cluster for your system, either Spark or x86. OK, time to look at our next Solaris 10 patching best practice. The next best practice is to use Solaris Live Upgrade to patch or upgrade an inactive boot environment. Sound familiar? It should. Using Solaris Live Upgrade for patching also made the list of the most important Solaris 10 patching philosophy points. What if my company already uses another patch tool? Why should I use Live Upgrade instead? Using Solaris Live Upgrade simplifies the Solaris 10 patching process in three important ways. First, with Solaris Live Upgrade, you avoid having to do multiple reboots or taking the system down to single user mode. Second, using Solaris Live Upgrade reduces the amount of downtime involved in patching. And third, Solaris Live Upgrade reduces risk by providing fallback capability. With Solaris Live Upgrade, you create an identical copy of the running OS. Then you patch the copy that you created, rather than patching the running system. When you are ready to activate the changes, you boot the copy and the copy becomes the active OS. This enables the currently running system to continue to run throughout the patching process. If problems occur with the newly patched copy, you can fall back to the original OS. All tasks except the reboot can be accomplished on an operational production system, so the impact on any running process is minimal. Let me give you a tip. Before you try patching with Solaris Live Upgrade, read this info doc. This document provides information about the minimum patch requirements for a system on which Solaris Live Upgrade software will be used. You must ensure the target system meets these patch requirements before attempting to use Solaris Live Upgrade software on the system. So now, let's look at our last Solaris 10 patching best practice. The last best practice is if you are going to use Live Upgrade to patch systems with non-global zones that are running the Solaris 10.8.7 release, Update 4, or an earlier Solaris 10 update release, you need to apply the Solaris 10 Live Upgrade Zones Starter Patch Bundle to your system. Why is the Solaris 10 Live Upgrade Zones Starter Patch Bundle so important for a zone's environment? Installing this patch bundle on the active boot environment will patch the system up to the level required to enable use of Live Upgrade in a basic zone's environment. You can download the Solaris 10 Live Upgrade Zones Starter Patch Bundle from SunSolve. Go to the Downloads section of the Patches and Updates page and select Recommended Patch Clusters. You'll find the Solaris 10 Live Upgrade Zones Starter Patch Bundle in the list of Solaris Patch Clusters. Be sure you select and download the patch bundle for your system either Spark or x86. So there you have it, my friend, the Solaris 10 patching best practices.
First, always install the latest patch and package utility patches first. Second, upgrade to the latest Solaris 10 update release during your next major maintenance window. Third, keep as up-to-date as possible with the contents of the Sun Alert patch cluster in between major maintenance windows. Fourth, use Solaris Live Upgrade to patch or upgrade an inactive boot environment. And fifth, if you are going to use Live Upgrade to patch systems with non-global zones that are running the Solaris 10 8.7 release, Update 4, or an earlier Solaris 10 update release, apply the Solaris 10 Live Upgrade Zone Starter Patch Bundle. Follow these best practices and you're sure to have a successful Solaris 10 patching experience time and time again. Is there anything else I can help you with today? No, I'm good, thanks. Patchman, um, I mean Bill. Actually, there is one other thing. I could use some training on how to do Solaris 10 patching. Can you recommend any documentation or courses? Watch and learn, my friend. The Solaris Patching Center on Big Admin is always an excellent place to find documentation on Solaris 10 patching and how to use patch commands and tools. Another good resource for patch information is the Patch Corner blog site. For the latest sysadmin training offerings, check out the Big Admin training and certification site. These sites should have more than enough information to get you started. Thanks, Bill. This has been really helpful. My pleasure. If there's nothing else, I'll sign off. That's it. Thanks again. Bye, Sam. Good luck on your next Solaris 10 patching adventure. Next adventure? I wonder what he meant by that.